Have you ever needed to horizontally center an element or a group of elements on a web page? There is a very common way to achieve this, but it's not overly intuitive right away. I also want to point out that we will learn other methods to do this, but with this video, we're focusing on how we can accomplish this given what we have learned thus far. Even with the advent of other methods, these are still common and really useful techniques for you to know. One of the most common ways to horizontally center items is to use margin auto on the right and left. You'll find this used all over on the web. By assigning auto to the right and left margins of an element, they take up the available horizontal space in the element's container equally, and thus the element gets centered. However, this will only work for horizontal margins. It has no effect on the top and bottom margins. It also won't work with floated and inline elements, and by itself, it can't work with absolute and fixed position elements either. I'll show you how to make all of this work in this exercise. I have a page that I've built out for us to start working on, and we'll just focus on one area of the page at a time. To start off with, I have a section element that wraps around everything. In the section, I just have an H1 and an H2, followed by a horizontal rule, and then I have an article with a class of example one. This article contains an H1 and a couple of paragraphs. In regards to the CSS, here's the CSS we'll begin working with. So far, I only have a rule on example one. I'm setting the border and the background color. What I'd like to do is I would like to center this element in the page. Currently, because these are block level elements, no matter how wide my page is, the content is just going to span across the entire page. From a usability perspective, this is not very desirable. First of all, from a design perspective, not having any sort of padding or margin on the right and the left just feels a little tight. The other and most important issue is that the line length of paragraph elements is going to get too long to comfortably read. What we need to do is we need to restrict the width of the element, and then once we've done that, we can center the element. So I'm going to target example one. I'm going to give it a width, and we'll just assign a width of 60%. If I save now and we refresh, you'll see I get a flexible container, and no matter how wide my page is, this container is going to take up 60% of the available width. Now, by default, it would look better if this whole item is center aligned in the middle of the page. We can easily do this by using our margin auto setting. So if I set the margin to auto on example one and we refresh, you can now see how this element remains centered in the middle of the page. The content inside of the element is still going to keep whatever alignment settings we have specified, but as a unit, it will center. We can even do this for the section element. If I make a rule for section and I first define a width, I'm going to make the width 90% for this element. And then just like we did before, we're going to set our margin. And this time we'll add margin on the top and bottom of 1M, and then we'll specify auto for the right and left. If I save and refresh, you're going to see that now this content is going to appear centered on the page, albeit it does take up quite a bit more horizontal space than the item that is only using 60% for the width. As you can see, these are really useful techniques in order to give a little bit of breathing room around your elements and cause the containing items to center as a unit. Let's move on to example two. I'll go into my HTML and I'm just going to uncomment out the HTML. And in my CSS, I'm going to uncomment out the rules for dot box. And I'm going to uncomment out these two rules. If I save the page and we refresh, you can see within this area, I have a border around example two, and then I have a background color on my box. Using the general dot box selector, I'm setting the width and the height of this element, as well as margin all the way around of 15 pixels. I'm also using text align center so that the text within the box is going to center in the middle. Now what we want to do for this particular element is we want to simply center the box within the containing element. I'll go down into the rule for dot example two dot box, and we're going to 
overwrite the default margin of 15 pixels. We're going to set the margin top and bottom to 15 pixels, and then we'll use auto for the right and the left. Once again, when I refresh, you can see that the box element now appears horizontally centered within its parent container. Let's move on to example three. I'll jump into my HTML. I'm going to uncomment out the block of code that is example three. You can see this example has three divs and they all have classes of box assigned to them. Let's go into our style file and I have some styles. I'll uncomment out the beginning styles that we're going to be using. These styles are simply going to set a border around the containing element, assign a background color to the three boxes, and I'm using float left. Float left is allowing the boxes to appear side by side within the containing element. I also am clearing my float after example three, using the trick that we talked about in an earlier exercise. What I'd like to do is I would like to have these three boxes appear in the middle of their parent container. When we are dealing with floated elements, there is no ability to actually center the element within its parent. So we are going to have to do something a little bit different for example three. What we'll use here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually shrink the size of the parent container and then we'll center that which will in turn center these three boxes. In order to do this, we're going to have to do a little bit of math. So if we look at the rules that we made earlier on the dot box element, we know that the width of each of these is 150 pixels. We also know that we have margin of 15 pixels. So technically each of the boxes is taking up 180 pixels. In my reset.css file, I'm using the box sizing of border box on all elements. So the border of the parent element, which currently is two pixels, needs to be added in as well. So if we add 180 plus 180 plus 180 plus two plus two, that gives us an overall width of 544. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to example three. And what we'll do here is we'll set the overall width to 544 pixels. Once I have done this, now I can use my margin of auto to simply center this item. If we refresh, you can see how now the parent element, example three, is centered within the page along with its children, the three floated boxes. Finally, let's uncomment out the last section of our web page. This is an article with a class of example four, and once again, it contains a div with a class of box. I'll save my HTML. We'll go back into our CSS, and I have some starting CSS, so I'll uncomment this out. Let's just save and take a look. Once again, I have another containing element, example four. I have a border, and on this particular element, I've set both a width and a height. I'm also using position relative, which by itself does not affect this element at all. On the box that is child of example four, I simply have a background color. We'll go ahead and we'll use a position of absolute on the box element. Now, if I try to simply add a margin auto to an absolutely positioned element, if we save and we refresh, you can see that it really has no effect whatsoever on the box. The box has moved to the upper left and top of the parent element, and that's the default behavior of it being positioned absolute. What we need to do to get this box to appear in the center of the parent is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set properties for top of zero, right of zero, bottom of zero, and left of zero. Now, when I save, if we refresh, you can see how the box is positioned not only horizontally, but also vertically within the containing element. It is worth noting that without the margin auto, if I get rid of this and I save the page and we refresh, you can see how the box will not be positioned in the center of the parent element. This trick only works on absolute positioned elements when you're using all four of the position helpers along with margin auto. With an absolutely positioned item, the spec says that when we have horizontal 
and vertical margins set to auto, it will set equal spacing if the values for the position helpers are set to zero. Finally, I'm going to position the parent element by simply using a margin of auto on example four as well. If we save and we refresh, you can now see that not only is the box positioned in the middle of the parent, the parent is also positioned. And as you can see, when I resize my page, the items are going to stay centered. Whether the parent elements will grow or shrink is dependent on the width properties that we assigned to the parent elements. Some of these have a fixed widths. They will not grow, but the ones that have a percent based width, they will grow. When you use margin of auto on the right and the left, it forces the elements to take up the available space equally. By default, it does not work in that manner when we use top and bottom. It's only going to work on the horizontal spacing. This is a really helpful trick, though, for making elements appear centered within their parent element or even within the page.